Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Rafael Sanchez Salas from Paris. I work at uh, L'Institut Mutualisme Re in, in France. And uh, it is my pleasure to present on a high full focal therapy and the European experience. This uh, presentation, I have the opportunity to, uh, to present on behalf of the Focal Therapy Society. The Focal Therapy Society is a project that's been going on for over a decade, led by Dr. Thomas Polashik and Dr. Jan de la Rosette. And now we became a, a society, the Focal Therapy Society, and we're trying to uh, move forward the field of, of focal therapy uh, sponsored by the Endo-Urological Society. So with that, I'll start my lecture on the European experience on HIFU. These are the conflict of interest that I, I, I will have to disclose. So the objective of the presentation is just to make an update on how uh, HIFU is moving forward in Europe in the focal therapy arena. It definitely it became a subject that you will see uh, often in the academic urology because it's, it proposes a new option to treat patients with a localized prostate cancer. So if you can see at the numbers, there's uh, around 18 registered clinical trials on focal HIFU in Europe. Uh, this is just like the tip of the iceberg because there's a lot of work that is going um, on, on, on an everyday basis. And just, just to look at that, we just want to go uh, briefly to some of the publications from, from 19, and 19 and 20, 2019 and 2020. You can see these uh, uh, publications from our uh, center is a comprehensive evaluation of focal therapy uh, complications. As we know, complications are an important subject in urological surgery. And this analysis uh, came as an, uh, as an idea to provide the, the real picture of these complications. You can see a number of over 336 patients that were evaluated with an overall complications of 32%, which uh, might seem high, but when you look in detail, we know that uh, over 90% of those complications are clavian one or two, and th this is a good message for our patients. This is another manuscript from, from our institution, and that was the analysis of focal therapy performed with HIFU and also cryo. And we, we found that Gleason score, PSA nadir, and infield recurrence were important uh, elements to take into account when you uh, evaluate these patients and to predict progression, especially the idea of the PSA nadir in that series, again, over 300 patients analyzed, uh, less than 2.5 was uh, the number that we found. Obviously, uh, this is just a number, and we need to evaluate more in a more dynamic way, per perhaps in a percentage uh, of impact after focal therapy. And we will see some information about that in a minute. So this is the, the numbers from uh, the London group led by this project by Armando Stabile, over 1,000 patients. And when you see the numbers, uh, the recurrence rates at five years are pretty similar what, uh, for, for what we see in, in, in our team in Paris. Uh, the, the small difference is that they do less uh, biopsies than we do. They base their uh, follow-up on multiparametric MRI. We perhaps believe that biopsies are extremely important and we combine MRI with biopsies. But perhaps we were doing a lot of biopsies in that sense and, and um, uh, the, the, um, the London group made a proposal which is something very interesting is the idea of uh, be, uh, evaluating how uh, PSA is behaving after uh, focal therapy and as you can see here at 12 month, 24 month and 36 month uh, Nadir will evaluate uh, if Nadir is plus one, plus 0.5, or plus 0.5 at 12, 24, or 36 months, respectively. You can have a combination of multiparametric MRI just to uh, provide an outcome. This is a, perhaps uh, a more comprehensive way, and not just doing biopsies or just MRI as uh, uh, groups were doing around the world. Uh, so. 
to answer this, uh, we combine the force uh, with the London group, and this is a recent publication which is showing that those patients that are having a, an, a, a response in terms of uh, lower um, PSA percentage is uh, those patients will have a, a better outcome in, in time. And this means that perhaps those patients uh, that have less than that might be uh, evaluated with a biopsy. So this is a way to, ra to, to rationalize biopsies uh, obviously over the base of a multiparametric MRI evaluation. So is there uh, possible to retreat with HIFU after uh, an initial treatment? Uh, this is a, a manuscript showing with uh, over 800 patients treated that a second HIFU pro, uh, high focal HIFU procedure is possible and not only possible but it's all, all, also causing minor detrimental effects in both urinary and rectal uh, function. This is very important for our patients to know that we can have uh, a recurrence in terms of a positive biopsy, for instance, a Gleason 3 plus 3 biopsy or Gleason 3 plus 4 biopsy that can be eventually retreated with the same energy and without impact uh, or, or, or minimal impact in quality of life. Well, how about another treatment? Sometimes you cannot just treat again with, a, with a, um, another focal therapy option, so we can go for salvage treatment, and this is, a, a, once again, a combined effort of uh, our, our team in Paris with the team in, in uh, London, and we, we evaluated those patients that had surgery after focal therapy, and where we can see this is an over 80 percent, uh, uh, 80 patients series, and you can see that uh, major grades were limited with a positive surgical margins of around 13 percent, and results that were acceptable in terms of continuity and potency. This is a controversial subject uh, today, and but we see that some risk factors were identified: infield recurrence, positive surgical margins and uh, the clinical stage are important when we uh, evaluate these patients after surgery. So those patients that actually have infield recurrence for both after focal therapy and uh, after surgery following focal therapy are to be surveilled in a more detailed fashion. Improved procedures, how we are improving the control of uh, what we're doing in the OR. This is a, a, a um, an essential subject, and this is our experience with a uh, in contrast enhanced ultrasound. This is something we are doing with the foc it's possible to do it with the focal one device. We can uh, uh, verify in, det in detail how the, the, the treated area is responding to this contrast, and we can do that in the OR. So, uh, if you have any doubts intraoperatively, we can modify or retreat. Uh, in the same procedure. F a follow up after focal therapy. This is uh, once again what, an important uh, message. M MRI is the current standard, but perhaps a combination of MRI and contrast enhanced ultrasound not only perform after the procedure in the OR, but obviously combining it with a uh, multiparametric MRI in the future could be a way to surveil these patients. So what, what are the actual situation of the current European trials? We will just go for um, a, a brief description of these trials. This is the trials that are actually going in France. Uh, let's just look at the focal trial. This is a, more than a trial. It's a prospective registry of patients uh, harboring 3 plus 4 prostate cancer uh, with uh, a, a PSA less than uh, 15 and with a single lesion that they should not occupy more than two sextants. This uh, prospective trial is uh, a, a, aims to see the results in this population, 3 plus 4, that is actually considered a sweet spot for focal therapy. There's another trial, the HIFU surveillance trial. This is a, somehow a comparison of HIFU in Gleason 3 plus 3 versus the actual gold standard for 3 plus 3, it would be active surveillance. And um, this is, oh, again, an ongoing trial uh, in France. Then we have the tor uh, Torchish trial that is uh, evaluating MRI-guided transurethral HIFO. This is not just HIFO uh, performed 
with a transrectal approach, but a transurethral approach. This is a, an interesting uh, study going on in Europe, and perhaps uh, it uh, recalls what the, the experience in the Canada original uh, study is, uh, and it is also evaluating um, the, the results uh, not only for localized, for, for symptomatic and localized, but also for recurrence of prostate cancer. In the UK, there is an, a, a, a huge activity, very important activity in terms of focal therapy, and this is the Atlanta trial. The Atlanta trial is wor really worth mentioning, and we go to this slide where it's, it's, it's really uh, promising because, as you can see, this is a randomized phase two trial in which focal therapy is being compared not in localized prostate cancer, but in metastatic prostate cancer, specifically in the oligometastatic prostate cancer. And we are comparing radiotherapy, radical prostatectomy, or minimal invasive of radiotherapy that is performed uh, with HIFO. So um, this is uh, giving us an idea of how focal therapy is moving forward, not only for localized, but this time for oligometastatic prostate cancer. Other protocols in, in Switzerland and Norway are looking at uh, focal therapy. This is um, uh, the, 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 the Swiss trial that is uh, evaluating focal therapy in uh, Gleason 4 plus 3. It's not just 3 plus 4, but 4 plus 3. So there, uh, it's a step ahead in, in the selection process for these patients. And a very important trial is the FARP trial, the, Nor the Norwegian trial led by Edward Bacco, which is actually comparing in a randomized fashion focal, focal uh, therapy with HIFU versus radical prostatectomy. They're really trying to overcome the hurdles of a randomized control trial, and we, we certainly hope to see the numbers and their outcomes uh, very soon. Another trial that is very important from the UK is the Kronos trial. The Kronos trial is a, is a very unique trial, and, and I have a specific slide for this. This is Kronos A and the Kronos B. When you look at the Kronos A, there actually there's an equal randomization of uh, over, over 1,000 patients that are undergoing either radical prostatectomy, radiotherapy, or brachytherapy, and for, or obviously focal cancer, uh, treatment with either high for cryotherapy, and uh, the, the criteria are including patients with a PSA the less than 20, Gleason score, uh, uh, the cut is, is reaching uh, a group of four plus three, and we can even have a, a small secondary Gleason three plus three, uh, three plus three con in the contralateral side, which is a is a, another another way to select these patients, and this is just for the Kronos A, but if you look at the Kronos B. It is quite interesting because for, for a group of uh, 1,200 uh, patients uh, randomized, you will see focal therapy treatment versus focal therapy plus finasteride or bicalutamide, which is something that is really missing in the literature today because they're addressing uh, prostatic microenvironment. It's not just putting the energy uh, on the prostate and hope that for the energy to do everything, but we are addressing uh, uh, the actual um, uh, prostatic microenvironment, and this is something that should probably, in, in my thinking, improve results of focal therapy. The, another uh, trial in the UK is the INDEX trial. This trial is, is, is being there, and they're just trying to be, define the, the actual treatment and provide this really focal therapy in uh, patients in which this is possible. Uh, the, the idea is to uh, uh, avoid performing a more uh, extended ablation like the hemiablation that you can see in most of the published trials up to today. So in conclusion, you can see that the European experience with HIFO includes some of the most relevant advances in the fields of focal therapy. HIFO has been moving forward in Europe since many years ago, the technology with most of the technology experience was developed in Europe, and they also the initial clinical experience. With that, uh, I want to thank you for um, the opportunity, and I want to thanks again the Focal Therapy Society for um, opening the path for focal therapy to become an accepted way to treat localized prostate cancer. Thank you very much.